Greetings and blessings, dear friends in the spirit, 111. It's Eddie Luisi. How are you? Notice my new glasses? Mm hmm. Nice. Kind of like black with a little gray type thing there. Well, I hope you had a great week. Happy day after Valentine's Day. Today's theme is the secret is dot, 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 love. Ooh. <laughs> So this was received from Unity's Daily Word.com called Heart Connection. Heart. I honor the heart connection I have with all life. Romantic love is often depicted by Cupid's arrow. Cupid's? Cupid. Cupid. <laughs> Cupid's arrow. Yet the love I feel is so much greater than any one type of love. I have an expansive heart connection with friends and family with pets, and even with nature. I share that connection as I act with kindness and consideration towards others. When I show compassion to those in need or give of myself in service to another person, an organization, or a cause, I am sharing the love of God. My words of encouragement and positivity are expressions of love moving through me to uplift one another. Perhaps my most sacred heart connection is the one I have with God. Through prayer and meditation, I experience an inner knowing of oneness with the divine. I express the warmth of God's absolute and unconditional love. And from Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart I will give you <clears throat> and a new spirit I will put within you. This is from Science of Mind. Today is a day for love. Teach only love, for that is what you are. It's from A Course in Miracles. And from Ernest Holmes, Science of Mind, page 151 of that big fat book. If one makes himself receptive to the idea of love, he becomes lovable. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. To the degree that he embodies love, he is love. So people who are love are loved. Got that? People who are love are loved. So if you're feeling a little down or you didn't have a great Valentine's Day, be love, be love, and love will come back to you. Some people don't like Valentine's Day. It's too commercial. It's painful for single people. There's too much pressure to make it special. I get all that. Valid points all. But what if we just saw this as a chance to love? Period. What if on this day it was not considered weird to wave and smile at everyone you meet? Dr. Ken Harris, that's you, brother. <laughs> What if it were completely normal to see people in the park hugging the trees? I don't know. Is that you too? Actually, <laughs> I think you were in Hawaii or something and you did a Facebook post hugging a tree. What if we just gave ourselves permission to feel and express our love for anything and everything? But wait, won't that cheapen it? I grew up attending a tiny Methodist church in rural Oklahoma. Not me, the, the author. I grew up in Astoria in a, a Catholic church. The tiny, the Sunday evening service would attract the same eight or nine people every week. We couldn't afford a full-time minister, so we often had undergraduate theology students. It was pretty good. There was one 20-year-old guy with a guitar who just wanted us to love. Would sing a few songs and then he made everyone hug and say, I love you to each other. After he left, I led, the, I led the Sunday music, me at 13, fumbling on piano and guitar, then telling everyone to hug and say, I love you. Now I can see that it was odd, <laughs> but powerful, having all these older people, including tough World War II vets hug me and say, I love you. And I said it right back, cheap, hardly. 
Today I say I love you a lot. And I mean it. What if just for Valentine's Day this year, it would be okay if you said it too? Well, Valentine's Day is over, but it's today's the 15th or whenever you see this, the 16th, 17th or whatever. Hug somebody, love somebody, tell them you love them, smile at them. Uh, it's all good, right? What you put out into the universe, it comes back to you, right? You put out kindness, love, compassion, it comes back to you, right? You know, you see people at your job, people at school, people in stores, people in your car that could be nasty and you don't know what they're going through, but give them kindness. Give them love, give them And the affirmation, I love life. I move through my day with a sense of connection and joy. I express the love within me in beautiful and elegant ways. My words, my choices, my actions are born from the love within me. Here's a little prayer from Daily Practice, Sacred Reading and Meditation. From Raja Housden, 10 Poems to Open Your Heart. Talking about universal love is easy. To love one person is a humbling commitment. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> the secret to staying married. Dun, dun, dun. Lizzie and I have been married... 21 years? 20 years? <laughs> I think 21 years. Um, sorry, honey. <laughs> it's early in the morning, I forget. Actually, we were born in 98, so we're in, oh yeah, we were 21, we're going on 22. This is received from Three Minutes a Day, the Christophers. Tony Rossi, God bless you. I love you, Tony Rossi. And all the Christophers. Christ bearers, Christophers. The secret to staying married. On the occasion of her parents' 50th wedding anniversary, nurse Katie Duke revealed on Instagram that they are often asked what their secret is to staying married. This is what her mom and dad had to say. There is no such thing as one secret thing that makes a marriage last. It's a constant effort of forgiveness and love, a consistent, dedicated friendship, an open mind, loyalty and faith, the ability to learn from life's lessons and letting go of past things that can keep you from growing together. Along these years, we've learned lessons about the world, about each other and about ourselves. You see, it's so easy for people to give up. And we never expected this to be a walk in the park. But after 50 years, every moment was worthwhile. So at the end of the day, there is no one thing that works. Find someone who is loyal and loves every aspect of you. <laughs> Even the annoying nu nuances. Find someone who can balance making you laugh and taking you seriously. Find someone you do not want to live without and make a decision to grow together. And from 1 Peter, 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, maintain constant love for one another. And the little prayer is, give married couples the wisdom and grace to grow together, Lord. And it's interesting, I listen to podcasts in my car all the time, and I was listening to Oprah's Soul Conversations, I think it's called, and she was with Michelle Obama, the former first lady. First of all, I met Michelle, and she is a sweetheart and so down to earth. But in the interview, she is funny. <laughs> she's a real person, and she's, she's here on this earth to serve. And she was talking about marriage and stuff. And, and she was saying so many people just give up when it's rough. And, and those are the times you have to stick it out and, and work it out. And let's say you are married 50 years. You get to that point. And maybe 10 of those years weren't that great. 
still 40 years were really great. <laughs> so I don't know. That's my little marriage advice. Um, this is from Neil Donald Walsh. On this day of your life, I believe God wants you to know that your contribution to this very day could set the stage for an entirely different kind of year. Mm. Are you ready? I'm ready. Funny how things work. Sometimes the smallest choice, one that, that, you, make, that you might make within these 24 hours, can set into motion huge energies, bringing you great good and enormous joy. Watch today then, and watch how you move through it. You may not know when you are setting those energies into motion, but you are with everything actually that you say and do. So go out and make it a great day. Love your friend, Neil Donald Walsh. Go out and make it a great day. That was the ending of Good Morning America for years, David Hartman. David, I don't know if you watch these videos or any of my friends from Good Morning America. Make it a great day. David Hartman used to say that. God bless you. So usually I end with reading something from Joel and Victoria Osteen, but just this morning, um, the 15th, Science of Mind had a, a reflection called, I love myself. So I said, hmm, this is working because I'm talking about loving others and marriage and commitment and loyalty, but I love myself. I'm gonna end with that. And then I'm gonna share a little bit. Um, I have a, a, a card that I received in the mail, just got yesterday at GMA and then a, a, a friend that um, we've been chit chatting on Facebook and she came to GMA in person, and I have a t-shirt I want to hold up, and I want to talk about my health. So those of you who stuck around, this is a short one. It's only 12 minutes right now. Actually, when I looked up, it was 12-12, right? A God wink, a synchronicity, working with the numbers. God um, affirms that what you're doing, what I'm doing, is good. Always observe, always look at signs. There are signs all the time. Open your eyes, Hope, open your heart to those signs. Some people believe that heaven's up there and heaven's when you die. Heaven's all around us right now. Just be open to it, receive heaven, receive joy, receive love, receive God, and give too. Give, forgive, give and forgive. Be loyal, be loving. From Kristen Jenoweth. She's a Broadway movie actress. If you can learn to love yourself and all the flaws, you can love other people so much better. And that makes you so happy. Be happy, don't worry, be happy. From Ernest Holmes, this thing called love. Well, this thing called love. I got a lot of songs in my head today. Hey, if anybody has a radio network and they want me to be on their radio show or give me my own show, I'm ready. I think I could ad lib. I could read stuff. I could talk. I could interview people. <laughs> you never know. Plant love in your garden. Kindness and sympathy flow. Kindness. Dun, dun, dun. Kindness and sympathy flow from the heart of love. And human goodness follow divine realization at every turn in life's road. Healthy self-love is not narcissism. It's not selfish or self-centered. It's really just acknowledging the gift of God that each of us is honoring one's own life as the life of the one. Many of us say that we love ourselves, but our actions don't always show it. I'm so grateful that we are actively teaching and learning self-care. Karen Drucker wrote this lyric in a beautiful song, Gentle With Myself. I will be easy on myself, and I love myself like a newborn baby child. This is a beautiful image. Can you see giving yourself the care you'd give a newborn? I know many of us are stretched thin by caring for others. 
I can easily call to mind a dozen people in my church who are caring for elderly parents or partner with Alzheimer's or raising their grandchildren unexpectedly. Sometimes love asks a lot of us. I know it can be hard to make oneself a priority when there are so many important things that we need to be doing. It is important, though. What good are we to others when we become depleted? Today, can you give yourself permission to love yourself in a way that is felt and meaningful? I'm going to read that one line again later. Um... And then share. In the affirmation, I love myself exactly as I am. I am willing to be kind and gentle with myself. I give myself all that I need to be my best. I rest in the peace of perfect being. Remind me to come back to this if I forget. I get forgetful 60. Kindness is contagious. My dear friend from the Kindness Podcast, Nicole. She sent me a Christmas card, and I just got it February 15th. It was in a pile of box. <laughs> Good morning, America. Eddie, just wanted to say hi and thank you for being a fellow kindness champion and divine connector. It's actually called divine appointer. Come on, get it right. <laughs> Joking trying to be kind. We are thankful to know you and can't wait to see what the new year holds. Me too. Wishing you and your loved ones a very Merry Christmas. Sincerely, the NJP Kindness Team. That's a nice picture. There's the kindness thing. And then inside here, oh, they had little stickers about being kind, purple hearts, and I put them in my office, so for me and for other people to remember. Look at this cool thing. Can you see it? That's too close. What you look for is what you'll see. Share your kindness story. Be brave, be kind, be you. I like that. We're gonna put this up. Uh, Nicole J. Phillips, we're gonna put this up in my office over here somewhere. Um, so yesterday I was saying, a, a friend in the spirit, Facebook friend, Cynthia Hudson. Cynthia is the publisher of Aspiring Magazine and the executive producer and host of Aspire TV. And she came to GMA yesterday and we chit-chatted. If you look on Facebook, we did a Facebook Live and her other dear friend did a Facebook Live with me. So I did two Facebook Live interviews yesterday. And she brought this shirt to the set. Unfortunately, she didn't get on national TV. But uh, it's an Alzheimer. Uh, no, no, this is pancreatic cancer, pancreatic cancer. And her sister-in-law is suffering right now. Her mom is. But let's, let's keep them in our prayers, thoughts, wishes that all things are good. Going back to science of mind. I know it can be hard to make oneself a priority when there are so many important things that need doing. It is important, though. What good are we to others when we become depleted? So I have a little tribe of men. Uh, Dr. Ken, Kenny, Dr. Raja, Nas, Gennaro, myself. A tribe of five and we chat with each other, we pray for each other, we have lunch together, and the men constantly, not constantly, but they're aware of me being tired and, and working hard and taking care of others. I said, Eddie, what can we do for you? So I wanted to just, on this, on this video, say thank you. Thank you to all my brothers. You all do special things individually. I don't need to share them here, but you all know what you do for me and my family, and I thank you. I'm, I'm very, I'm very um, grateful, and I love you guys. Um, so, 
we're gonna end with my health. Remember two weeks ago, I had high blood pressure. I thought it was 160 over 100. Actually, the doctor told me it was 166 over 100, which is pretty darn bad. I think average or good is 120 over 80. Well, I spent two weeks doing things, and I'll tell you what I did in a second, but I went to my doctor yesterday, and it's 120 over 85. Not bad. So um, I... Uh, I am very, very, very happy and grateful. Um, she wants to see me back in three months, so I'm going to con continue what I'm doing. So, Dr. Roger, Sahari, Sahari, how do you say your name? Roger, you never told me. Um, he is the founder and president and creator of Sprint Set, a, health, uh, a weight loss system, but it's more than just weight loss. It, it's a healthy system to clean out your body to get rid of the visceral fat, to get rid of the toxins. And it's really natural, folks. And eating two proteins a day, two vegetables a day, two fruits a day. The first few days, you could have fats and seeds and nuts. And then after that, he strips all the fats away. So then the fat strip from you. Um, I lost already nine pounds healthily, if that's a word. Um, so thank you for that. He also has a wellness center. It's called Above and Beyond Holistic Wellness Center in Paramus, New Jersey. And I go there every Tuesday and he gives me a chiropractic uh, adjustment. And then I see um, Jin, who does acupuncture for me. So Roger, thank you. Um, also, a few things in my life resolve so so a little stress left my life so thank you god god wherever you are for for doing that i've been walking daily i've been drinking a lot of water i don't have my bottle here but i have a 32 ounce bottle and i drink anywhere from two to three of those bottles a day most people say that you're supposed to have eight eight ounce glasses so that's that would be two bottles 64 ounces Roger in Sprint Set says, whatever your weight is, you should drink half of that in water. So I would actually have to drink three bottles. So some days I get all three, some days I get two, two and a half. But as long as I get that two in, I'm really, really happy. Um, also a dear friend locally, um, Dr. Bernadette Dunn, she has a craniosacral, craniosacral chiropractic, where she kind of does stuff with like massaging the temples and this and that. And I go to her every three weeks. So in the past two weeks, I saw Roger twice for adjustments. I saw Jin twice for acupuncture. I saw Bernadette twice for craniosacral. Um, been on the, the sprint set. I've been walking. I've been meditating. Oh, uh, Roger, in one of his books, he mentions wheatgrass lowers um, blood pressure. So I had a couple shots of wheatgrass. And... Um, I'm doing better. So thank you, Roger. Thank you, everyone else. Dear friends in the spirit, 111. I don't know how many of you stayed to the end and how many of you saw this, but God bless you. I love you. I appreciate you. Don't forget to share your faith with family and friends. Share your kindness. Share your gifts to all. And don't expect things to come back, but accept things to come back to you. Don't forget to cue the spirit. Peace and love. Thank you.